Now in questions like number two, involving motion in a vertical plane, what I like to do is always draw a diagram. Now I'll assume that this is the ground and we have a particle being projected at a height of 10 meters above the ground, so just put that in. Okay. So here's our particle, say, and we project it upwards with a speed of u meters per second and clearly our particle is going to go upwards, come to rest and then drop back down to the ground. We're told that when it hits the ground, just before it hits the ground, it's moving downwards with a speed of 17.5 meters per second. And when it hits the ground, it hits the ground after a time big T seconds. Now any particle moving freely under gravity is going to experience an acceleration and that acceleration in this case is downwards, the acceleration due to gravity so we'll say that that is g and it has a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay so this would be a typical kind of diagram that I would draw for questions like this on vertical motion under gravity. Now for part A okay we've got to find out u and being a SUVAT type equation, I'm going to write down the various variables S, U, V, A and T and decide which equation I'm going to need to use. Now, whenever you use a SUVAT equation, make sure you always associate a positive direction because you're going to be dealing with vector quantities. And in questions like this, if I started to project from a point up here, this will be where I start, okay, and I project upwards, I'm going to take upwards as positive, okay? And you've got to be very careful, as I say, in questions like this. Always associate a positive direction. Now, first of all, do I know S? Yes, I do, okay? I know that S represents displacement, not distance. So taking this point as my starting point, when this particle goes up and comes back down, okay, the displacement from here, when it arrives down here, is negative 10. So S equals minus 10 meters. U, well U is what we're trying to find, okay. V, do I know that? V is the final velocity, so it, the speed is 17.5, but the direction is downwards, and downwards would be negative, okay? So that's minus 17.5 meters per second. For A, A, the acceleration due to gravity, is downwards, so that would be minus 9.8, okay? Let's just move that T out of the way, meters per second per second. T, anyway, is big T seconds when it arrives down here. Okay, so in part A then, we're trying to find out what U is, and so I've got to remember one of the equations to use. Okay, so the, the equation that would involve these variables, apart from big T, would be the one that is V squared equals U squared plus 2as. Okay, and if we use that equation, we have that v is minus 17.5, so we're going to square that, so that's minus 17.5 squared, equals u squared, plus 2, times a, which is minus 9.8, times s, which is the displacement of minus 10. So, Working this out, minus 17.5 squared, if you do it on the calculator, is 306.25 equals u squared. And working this term out gives plus 196. 
Subtracting 196 from both sides gives u squared equals 306.25 minus 196 and that comes to 110.25. Take the square root of both sides so we have u equals the square root of 110.25 and you find that you get 10.5 so u is 10.5 meters per second. Alright so I'm just going to update the diagram so we'll just rub that out and we now know that u equals 10.5 meters per second. Now that we know that u is 10.5 meters per second, I can write it in here as well, 2.5 meters per second. And we've now got to move on to part b, and part b asks us to find the time it takes for the particle to go up there and back down. And we can do this all in one go. All we've got to do is find an equation now that works out big T, okay? And there's quite a few equations that we could use. Let me just remind you what they could be. We could use S equals UT plus a half AT squared, okay? We know S, we know U now, and we know A, so we could find T. We could also use S equals u plus v multiplied by t all divided by 2. And we could also use v equals u plus at. Now the one that I would want to use would be this one. Why? Because I certainly don't really fancy using that one. That's going to lead to a quadratic equation in t and that's going to take some time to solve. This one I could use, but this one seems a bit simpler, so I'm going to use v equals u plus at. So using v equals u plus at, what are we going to have? Well, v we know is downwards, so again you've got your plus directions upwards, so be careful all the time with these directions. So v is minus 17.5, okay equals u, which we now know is 10.5, plus a, so that's minus 9.8, times t, and t is now big T. Working this out, we have minus 17.5 then, equals 10.5, minus 9.8t. Rearranging this by adding 9.8t to both sides, okay, would give us that, and if I add 17.5 to both sides, then we're going to have 10.5 add the 17.5, so that's going to be 28. Divide both sides now by 9.8, and you have t equals 28 over 9.8. And if we just come down here on this side, if you do that on a calculator, you can give it as an exact fraction, it comes out at 20 over 7, that would be seconds. Or if you work it out as a decimal, you get 2.857 and so on. Okay, and rounding that to say one decimal place is 2.9 seconds to 1 dp. Okay, so hopefully you understand that, and that brings us to the end of part two.